morning, Professor Veneto, Director of the Royal University Institute for European Studies. Thank you for participating in this mock session of the Jean Monnet Network on EU-China relations and specifically about your work on EU-China relations and the new global scenario. It is a pleasure to have you here with us. First of all, I would like to ask you, what are the possibilities of the reactivation of the China Comprehensive Investment Agreement and what are alternatives to it? Thank you very much. A pleasure to, to be with you and answer to these questions as part of the project. Um, the EU-China investment, uh, Comprehensive Investment Agreement has been really um, the most um, advanced, really, uh, cooperation agreement between the EU and China. It was very difficult, uh, the negotiations. The negotiations lasted for uh, quite a number of years, and it was only thanks to the then Chancellor Angela Merkel uh, during the German presidency of the um, Council that it was possible to finalize the agreement. The agreement is and was very ambitious. Uh, it um, included not only investment issues, but also uh, a number of other areas of cooperation, as uh, it has been the case on um, of the current um, trade and investment agreements that the EU has been concluded in recent years. Most of them have integrated in the agreements not only investment or trade uh, issues, but also the so-called new trade uh, new trade areas, um, which is really uh, quite uh, extensive, quite comprehensive, including such um, issues, such topics as corporate governance, or uh, in the case of China, very relevant, liberalization of quite a number of structural topics related to the uh, import of uh, goods from from uh, Europe. As we know, one of the main issues um, in the um, which have tensed the relationship between European companies and, and the Chinese uh, government has been the fact that there were uh, quite a number of conditions for the um, export and the import of goods uh, and services from uh, Europe. So the Comprehensive Investment Agreement was really quite a advanced uh, step in uh, the direction of liberalization, a changing of the internal structure uh, of doing business uh, within China. Mm, it was there were also a number of. Um, um, instruments created within the agreement in order to solve um, possible uh, conflicts. Um, there was still not uh, finalized the issue of a arbitration um, instrument, but there were other uh, government um, techniques, governmental techniques in order to uh, solve uh, possible issues of um, confrontation or uh, disagreement between the two parties. So all in all, the agreement was an ambitious uh, project. Uh, it would have certainly increased uh, trade and investment relationships between the EU and China. And to my eyes, this was a positive step. Which are the possibilities of the, the reactivation of the EU uh, China Comprehensive Investment Agreement at this very moment, I think very, very few, um, very scarce possibilities. Because, uh, as we know, uh, a number of political tensions between China and the EU due to human rights issues on the one hand, and then uh, the reaction of the Chinese government concerning, um, you know, certain uh, diplomatic um, decisions have made that the agreement was suspended, the um, ratification process was suspended by the European Parliament. 
So given the current geopolitical confrontation and the geopolitical tensions between uh, China and the US, and also the uh, increased um, closing really of the uh, Chinese market because of political reasons, uh, the possibility that the uh, CIA would be reactivated at this stage, as I said, is very scarce. So which are the alternatives to it? Which the alternatives are to take some of the areas uh, which had been included in the uh, CIA, in the Comprehensive Investment Agreement, and try to uh, cooperate based uh, you know, on um, common decisions and common agreements, which would be not as comprehensive as the agreement, but uh, which could be decided on a case-by-case -case, uh, basis. So the alternative really is try to get all or most of what was in the agreement and follow uh, with, um, uh, you know, case by case or sector by sector, area by area uh, agreements. Thank you very much, Professor. Secondly, what are possible areas of cooperation between the European Union and China at this moment? And what for the foreseeable future? That's a very important question and follows from what I was just uh, stating before. Uh, I see one very important area, which is climate change, um, the cooperation at the global level uh, on climate change. This is something which, as we know, uh, interests uh, particularly the Chinese uh, leadership. And China has made commitments and advancements in this area. On the other hand, this is one of the main goals of uh, the EU uh, policies um, from, the, the, from the Lion Commission, but also the EU government have very clearly uh, stated as one of the main goals, the uh, energy transition, as we know, and the fight against climate change. So this is one area in which EU and China, EU and China uh, can and should cooperate uh, in the immediate and in the foreseeable future. That uh, should also take place, not only bilaterally, but at the uh, multilateral level. Uh, and that means to implement uh, the international agreements uh, and the uh, goals which have been established um, for the next uh, years uh, in order to get a zero um, net carbon uh, economy. That's a very ambitious goal, would be very difficult. And obviously China is one of the main uh, polluters, one of the, the main uh, emittents of uh, emitters of um, uh, carbon um, uh, in, the, in the atmosphere. But as I said, the EU should follow and cooperate with China in order to be even more ambitious in this regard. Another area in which there is possible possibility to cooperate is certainly in trade. Um, some areas of trade, which uh, should should still be, you know, part of uh, possible cooperation. And then um, also, well, this this is certainly more difficult. Uh, we could think of um, a cooperation within the multilateral organizations. That means. For instance, within the UN, uh, in uh, humanitarian uh, missions, uh, and as has been the case in the past, uh, this is getting more and more difficult given the current geopolitical framework. But this this could also be uh, and should be probably one of the areas, and many some others in which uh, you know there should be from the EU and Chinese side um, a willingness to cooperate. And lastly, how should the European Union behave in the current geopolitical confrontation between the United States and China? This is certainly um, a very sensitive issue, difficult one. Uh, obviously, the EU 
is um, a close partner and has to be a close partner with the U.S. Um, in all the different dimensions of the transatlantic relationship uh, through NATO and through all the political and also economic linkages that uh, bind uh, Europe with the U.S. As we are witnessing in the current Ukrainian crisis and the aggression of Russia against uh, the Ukraine, uh, the uh, working together of uh, the U.S. and the EU has been absolutely necessary. Um, and the EU, uh, given this crisis in very close to their own territories, uh, is well advised to be as close uh, to the U.S. and to NATO as uh, it has been the case. So it is no doubt that the allies, the main ally of uh, the EU is the U.S., is NATO. Mm, the security of the EU um, countries will be for many years to come um, close linked with the security umbrella that the U.S. has provided to uh, the European countries since the Second World War. And in this geopolitical confrontation between the, EU, the US and China, there is no doubt that the uh, EU and the Western countries, the EU and the European countries, um, have to be a very um, committed part of the Western um, countries, the Western um, um, bloc, if you like, because really what it is happening here is that we are coming into, as many commentators have underlined, a kind of second Cold War. If this is the case, is there a own uh, space for a EU policy toward China? Well, we are seeing how difficult this is. We have um, recent weeks, the uh, Germany, we have seen how Germany has issued its own strategy towards China. Uh, the EU has struggled to get its own because differences within the, the different European governments in terms of the attitude to uh, take uh, in relation to China. Uh, there is the need to separate the security issues from the other areas of cooperation that we were mentioning before. And this was certainly the strategy that uh, the EU and its main um, countries uh, within the EU have been trying to pursue um, in, in, since decades, but this is getting more and more difficult. So, how should the EU behave? It should behave in a loyal way, in a very close um, uh, linked with link with the US as uh, you know this is the consequence of the transatlantic relationship on the one hand on the other it does the EU does not have the need to act uh, in the same way of, as the, the US in terms of the securitization of all the relationships there I think that the EU has a something more of a uh, leverage, something more of a free space uh, to act. And the Chinese leadership also suspects from uh, the EU uh, that uh, these areas of possible co cooperation are being uh, pursued and followed. And this is what I think uh, should be tried uh, from, from the side of the EU in the, recent, in, in, in the next years. Thank you very much, Professor Renito, for providing us with this very important insight of the current situation and the global scenario regarding the relationship between China and the European Union. Thank you very much for your participation. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, we look forward to uh, continue with our projects uh, in the relationship between EU and China.